We are talking to Taylor Bradford of the Gloucester Daily Times. Hi, Taylor. Hey, how are you, Heather? I'm good. Big announcement this week. Yeah, so as you guys tuned in to Governor Baker's announcement yesterday, he gave everyone the heads up that they'll be entering phase one of reopening into a new normal here in Massachusetts. And so that phase one is called START. And, you know, a lot of the same things we've been hearing throughout um, the pandemic still apply, right? Wash your hands, wash your face, cover your face, um, socially distance when you can. The big thing is we have changed from a stay at home advisory to a safer at home advisory. So people can start to kind of come out of the woodworks a little bit, um, you know, again, maintaining those socially distancing protocols. But it is, as of yesterday, opened a few different things within um, our Commonwealth. So that includes construction sites, manufacturing sites, and places of worship. Um, again, how each company and each place of worship wants to approach that is up to them. I know I've heard a couple of churches in the area, while they are allowed to do in-house worship now, are taking the precautionary measures and kind of staying within that virtual platform to do their Sunday services. So that will continue to develop. We're going to be talking to a few churches this week to kind of see what they are doing um, amidst everything that's going on. So that's kind of what it looks like. Again, this phase has about a two week span and then, or three week span. And then from there, Governor Baker will reassess saying, you know, can we go into phase two? There's a couple other things that will be opening up later on in this month, office spaces, laboratories, hair salons, car washes, other things like that are going to be re reopening as well, again, with restrictions. But this month looks like, in addition to the nice weather, you know, we'll get some of those things that we've been craving for to be reopening in our area. So quite exciting. Um, again, they're saying we're going to be pacing ourselves. So we still got a long ways to go, but it's exciting to see that we're making headway. So Taylor, a lot of people have wondered about opening up the houses of worship before the car washes. Now, I don't care that much about car washes, but they do seem to be a pretty safe business and houses of worship you know there's all kinds of opportunity for interaction there and i assume and i am quite positive that people will be safe but do you have any fine tuning on that decision i don't i think again houses of worship are going to be opening up before car washes just by a right. few days but yeah i think it, it begs the question of you know what what justifies one thing opening up and what thing what other things aren't opening up right now i think we had the same conversation with hairdressers versus dog groomers right like where's the line what makes these protocols in place i will be talking to uh james decino and um karen carroll tomorrow um to kind of get some clarity on that um on just kind of you know again that's governor baker's call but maybe from the, the local level you know what how are these decisions being made and what does that look like on the ground so i mean i don't know but um you know i think religion um is a big thing um everywhere and whether whatever you believe so people are really itching to get back into the, those houses of worship as soon as possible but you know people also want their cars clean so yeah yeah it struck well i saw someone on facebook saying i don't understand this decision and again i think the governor had a lot of pressure from different entities uh, in this decision-making process. The last thing I want to say is I did see somewhere in his um, manifest that they're encouraging houses of worship to be outside. And mm. I think that's a nice idea, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. I know I've heard a few, I mean, not places of worship, but graduation. There's a graduation in New Hampshire that's going to be done on a ski mountain. Um, and so people are getting creative. The weather's getting nicer. Why not? breath of fresh air um so i think that'll be definitely interesting if churches do decide to go that route um and kind of what that means for their congregations so right exactly well it'll be interesting to hear your conversation with jim decino and karen carroll is that video or is that yes yeah, so um, video and article so both of those will be coming your guys way later on this week so yeah, good we will be watching and reading so then you had a story about teachers this week right yeah, I had uh, the great opportunity to speak with three fifth grade teachers from the West Parish Elementary School to kind of talk to them about their day to day life and what that's been looking like for them. Um, and so I was able to speak with um, five, they're about a, a team of fifth grade teachers and they kind of talked about, you know, their workday is not a nine to three anymore. And what does that mean for them? And they were telling me how they were getting phone calls at, you know, before dinner, after dinner, they're helping like parents 
do technical navigation, trying to navigate how to work their computers at 10 o'clock at night. And they're saying, you know, this is a lot, but we're okay with it. And you can see that like through that kind of statement and just the emotion, we did a video and through the emotions that they had while we were Zooming is just that they love their students. They love their students, they love what they do, and they've been doing this a long time and they love each other. And so it's just been evident that through all the hardship that they, they have really found ways in which to navigate it um, as a team. And so that's just been really encouraging to see them over, over this time. But definitely still a lot up in the air. We've got a, a few more weeks of school left. And so they're brainstorming on how they're going to, especially for those fifth graders, help them transition into sixth grade without nature's classroom, without the mad hot ball. And so really asking those questions of how are we going to um, go forward in this direction? We're still waiting to hear about graduation for um, our high school seniors. And so still waiting to hear um, from Gloucester High School about those decisions as well. And so school has a lot of um, exciting things that they, they're proud that they've done during the pandemic, but there's still a lot of questions left on what is to come during this time. And fifth grade teachers are a special bunch. That's my feeling that they, they are leading these children really into, you know, the beginning of that, that sort of leaving childhood. Mm -hmm. And they, I think the teaching is wonderful then. And I think they are great. Um, it's a great opportunity to really help a child with that transition. And it's even more difficult this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. So no, I have a great fondness for fifth grade teachers. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so thanks for that. And we also had some tragedy this week, right? Yeah. So unfortunately, um, on Friday evening, a Gloucester woman was found dead in the Rockport quarry. Um, Elizabeth Duff, 54 from Little Parker Pit Quarry um, off Rowe Avenue in Rockport um, was found there um, by the, according to the Essex County District Attorney's Office. So at this time of publication, no foul play suspected. Um, and so as of right now, um, that can kind of be taken off the table. Um, but the Gloucester police were made aware of this around 8 p.m. on Friday, and the Rockport police found Duff's car containing some of her personal belongings parked near the quarry. Um, so this investigation is still ongoing at the time being. Um, but that's kind of all that we have. It's really, really a sad way um, to end the week. And But, yeah, so that, that was some news that we got from the police um, earlier, later last week. So. And I happen to know um, that she was working with the 2025 climate change group here in Cape Ann. I'm going to interview them tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be, um, a, a, I, it's just so sad. And in, in these difficult days anyway, there's those, those extra layers of sadness. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And what's happening with Essex Seafood? Yeah, so with the Essex Seafood, um, I mean, as we kind of had reported earlier, that Essex Seafood had um, had a fire that, that had done some pretty major damage to the to the building on Mother's Day. And so, you know, a while there had been damages and it seemed pretty significant. Um, Howie Lane, um, who's the owner of Essex Seafood, has announced that he is planning to rebuild the restaurant um, after a majority of it had been burned down on Mother's Day. So the, the fire had an estimated about $250,000 worth of damages. So a lot um, had been done um, by the fire, but he's hoping to rebuild. I know a lot of people are very excited as we're entering into the summer season, looking at how um, people can get that fresh food um, from a, a local favorites. But yeah, so they are reopening. Um, I don't know when that will be, but he's gonna kind of, you know, lay down the foundations again and um, start putting those things together so people can enjoy the seafood over at the, the Essex restaurant. Well, I am really happy to hear that. I, it was such a sad story. Another, yet another sad story in these sad mm -hmm. times. But to hear that the Lane family is moving forward and wants to continue with their business, it was a great business. They used to make a clam fritter I loved. Mm -hmm. So it's just really good news to know that they will proceed. That's great. And what are you working on for next week? Yeah, so kind of starting off the work weekend again, the Gloucester Daily Times in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at how phase one is affecting Cape Ann, kind of seeing how, right, we, we've covered everything from before the pandemic was even a, a glimpse in our eyes to how it totally impacted Cape Ann to now, how are we adjusting? How are we adjusting to this new normal? And how are we entering into to phase one of Charlie Baker's um, kind of 
phasing into a new normal. So we'll be covering that, um, whatever that might look like as the city continues to develop and make and respond. So definitely going to be talking to, as I said before, James Destino and um, Karen Carroll from the Public Health Department to talk about how the city's responding. Also looking at how um, a some local fishermen in the area are going to be pre premiering on a television network that we all know and love, Discovery uh, Channel. So definitely stay tuned for that as uh, we are working on something right now as uh, you know, they'll go from the waves to the, the actual waves to, um, you know, <laughs> the digital waves on TV um, happening on Friday. So if you guys want to figure out who those two fishermen are and when that'll be streaming on Friday, definitely check out the Gloucester Daily Times later this week. So pretty exciting stuff. So. That's very exciting. Really, I love ending with some good news. I am sort of interested. I want to end this way, actually, Taylor. Yeah. When you look back on your reporting in the last two months, do you have any sort of personal um, grand brushstrokes of what you see? Do you, what, what do you look back and see? Do you see that the city really coming together in a hopeful way? Do you see like struggle, like hard struggle underneath? What's, what's sort of your observations from your collective reporting? Yeah, so I think the beautiful thing about living in the Cape Ann and North Shore area is that we get to see so many different cities and towns in this area and just see how they're all responding. And I've just been extremely encouraged by the way in which specifically Gloucester has kind of, you know, if you, you go down 128 North and you see the the um, houseboat, it says we're all in this together. And I really do think that that is how the city has responded again. Um, we're a collective made of individuals, so everyone has their own perspective and own, own way of approaching the, the pandemic, but really have seen people, local businesses, restaurants, just people on the street trying to help each other um, in a responsible way, but in a way that is encouraging. And um, something that's great is that I, I'm never short of encouraging stories of people donating masks or food. That is something that, you know, I don't think I'll ever run out of having to cover because this, the city is just outpouring with that type of news, which is really encouraging. Um, and so I think that has definitely been something that I've been seeing as my reporting. Again, it is definitely hard and um, to hear the hard, it's really sad situations of people losing loved ones. Um, but even through those moments, hearing how people have created GoFundMe pages for the families and the children of those who have lost loved ones and seeing how that works. And so I'm just curious to know is as we go into the summer months, how that will evolve and how we'll move forward in midst of the pandemic. I'm constantly reminded of how the mayor said back in January, right, the theme of this year is moving forward and how appropriate that seems at this time and how, what does that look like to, to move forward? It's not moving on, it's moving forward. And what does that mean? So I think that's the question. When I sit down to start writing and reporting every day, it's asking, you know, how is the city moving forward today um, as opposed to yesterday or two weeks ago? Um, so definitely learning a lot and definitely loving uh, to be able to speak with different community members as we continue to learn about the city that we love. Well, thank you so much. That's a, that's a great cheerleading uh, statement for our city and our community. So thanks so much. And we will talk to you on Thursday, right? Sounds great, Heather. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. You too. Take care, Taylor. Bye. Bye.